Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Lakers finally. Which way is the camera? All right, we had it right the first time. <laughs> the Lakers finally get a win in the Summer League, man. Finally got a win in the Summer League. We beat the Hawks by one. Castleton was really, really in impactful in this game. 17 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. The man was everywhere. Offensive rebounds, clutch opportunities, putbacks. It, it, was, uh, it was definitely a big game for Colin Castleton. Uh, Bronny James finally got on the, in the scoring column, man. Finally got in the scoring column. 12 points, hit two threes. Uh, I think he was like 5 of 12 or something like that from the field. Got some early points up and was able to kind of carry himself through the process of trying to get some respectable numbers. So he had a really good game, respectable game. Um, Henson, got to give Henson credit. When the Lakers were down by like 10, he started getting hot from behind the arc. We don't get this far without him and his efforts on the offensive end, shooting the ball, hit four out of 10 threes, definitely big game. Uh, Kuzi, we were such a better team with Kuzi on the floor. He had steals, he had assists, he had a two threes out there. Kuzi was really, really impactful in this game. And as I said, you could put a real point guard out there who can actually get into the teeth of the defense and kick out to others, do some things on the defensive end. You really have a cohesive basketball club because otherwise we don't really have a point guard running things. He tried to get the ball to Sean East. He did a few good things, but, you know, he's not really a real point guard, not somebody you can trust to get others involved. So I just think that once we started kind of getting away from East, kind of getting away from – some of our other bench guys that don't really play well consistently, uh, we started seeing this team really start to step it up and really play well. And the addition of Bronny getting in the scoring column really helped us get over the hump as well. Um, I, I'll tell you this, Max Lewis was aggressive, but uh, not very good. 3 of 12 from behind the arc, very aggressive. But he was irritating the hell out of me. I was, I was screaming at my phone at Max Lewis because I felt like down the stretch of the basketball game with Castleton finding it, Henson finding it, Kuzi having it going, he decided that he wanted to be the hero. And I appreciate that he was getting calls. He was getting to the line. He was missing free throws. So, And then on the other side of the ball, he's fouling. So as you find yourself up by like four... His efforts end up eating, drawing away at the score, and you end up having a one-possession game down the stretch. And I really genuinely blame him for that. <laughs> Max Lewis trying to be a hero on a cold night, playing selfish ball, ultimately put us in a position to almost lose this basketball game. I was thoroughly, thoroughly livid with him. <laughs> I was not happy with that young fella um, at all. There was moments in the third quarter as well where I thought there was a few sequences where guys were really looking for their own shot. I think Bronny started it in that sequence. He looked for a three-point shot. He kind of deliberately dribbled into a three. It was almost like he's I'm going to get a three now type of situation. Not looking for anything but this, and I'm going to walk into it, and then I'm going to shoot it. And it brick came back down. Whatever happened, I don't remember what it was. Then we got another offensive play. Another player had to make up for that. I think it was Troy. Now I'm going to shoot a three because I didn't get the ball on the last possession. So I got to dribble into my three. Brick. Go back down. Defense, whatever happens. Then we have another possession and somebody else decides they were going to be selfish. Like, all right, I'm going to get my shot now because I didn't get the ball on the last two possessions. Brick. So it was like, yo. And I said it as it happened. This is midway through the third quarter, and I'm going to make sure I put it on my, my channel. Players who play like that, they don't get very far. You have to work as a team, and you have to be less deliberate about doing your own thing. Selfishness from individuals with their own agenda will always work against you in trying to make a basketball team in this league. And we saw countless efforts of selfishness in key moments that were noteworthy for me. So I just wanted to point that I was like four different guys that showed me that they were out for self. And while this is a situation where you got to make the team, at the end of the day, if you don't work as a team, then the scouts 
and people who are looking for you to be a connective piece to a collective unit are going to see you as outside of that unit and it of course that in and of itself will keep you outside of the unit so that's something i wanted to say i just think that there was a real opportunity to look at the tape on this one and coach some guys up because i saw some guys make some good decisions where they work together and and good things happen and i saw some terrible sequences where guys were looking for their own thing going and it didn't help the team at all and it almost cost them in in, in those circumstances so this was a perfect game for both seeing what good stuff works for young players and what bad stuff does not work for young players and um i just really enjoyed this particular basketball game overall it had its ups and downs uh, i think the data was was clear colin castleton needs to be given a real opportunity with our actual ball club the way he's playing right now he really does um i wouldn't be upset if we shut him down for the summer league from here on out i wouldn't be upset at that just like we just we did uh Dalton we did not play Dalton tonight and I know that was deliberate and I don't expect to see him no more in the summer league sometimes you just get to a point where you don't really need to see anymore and with Cal and Castleton I think tonight we were there I don't need I don't need to see anymore get him off of that two-way put him on the regular roster and allow him to be part of our center's position I'm not certain he's not our best backup center right now I'm not certain he's not so that's that's what I want to say about Colin Castleton he we definitely don't win this game without him playing as well as he did on both sides of the floor. Um, and uh, I think we played some good team defense down the stretch of that basketball game, man. A lot of hustling, a lot of hard pushing around. I think one thing that needs to be noteworthy or said, rather, is that uh, Blake Henson is going to have to continue to get in better shape. And if he doesn't lose some of that lower body fat, he's not going to be able to guard the people he's going to be asked to guard in this league. This is, is what it is. He's heavy, but not in a good way when it comes to his lower body. You would think he'd be able to move a bit better looking at him, but he can't. He doesn't move laterally very well, and there were times where he was out of position because of that. So it's about cutting down them damn meals, ramping up the, the leg work, ramping up the, the cardio work, and slimming down for Blake Henson. You can be heavy set, but if you can't stay in front of the people that you're going to be in front of, they're not going to allow you to have enough playing time to get those shots up that you want to get. Now, he's an elite shooter. That's Tonight, we saw that on display. He hit, I think, three threes in a row. We know he's an elite shooter. But if you can't guard anybody, it's going to really put us a, a cap on your potential. Um, and, and we saw him have issues with that. He did have a couple sequences where he guarded very well, but the majority of the time, he, he was just slow afoot. Very slow afoot. And that's, that's not going to cut it. So that's something I wanted to say. Um, you know, that's pretty much it, man. I got to say that we do have some guys on this team that I really don't think we need to really invest in. Some of them dudes in the summer league, some of them other names that I haven't mentioned. I don't really know that they have a future even in our G League team, some of them dudes, to be honest with you. I was not impressed. Um, I'm just going to be honest. And I've watched all six of these games for the most part missing a quarter here and there but i've watched all six of the games and when certain people are on the floor we just cannot succeed it just is what it is you just cannot win with those people uh and when they sit down things get better uh so that's just what it is i i like some of our summer league team good half of them really go the other half need to go no way no way around it um and so that's just that's my harsh opinion man that's really how i feel but castleton played well Bronny played well henson played well um koozie really helped us a lot in in the minutes he was given and uh you know max lewis was aggressive a lot of times people like aggressive but if that aggression isn't matched with uh intellect and and, and, a, and, a, and an intention to be connective uh, then it could be a, de a detriment and that's exactly what it was tonight his was a detriment tonight uh, his aggression missing layups left and right uh, unnecessary fouls down the stretch of a basketball game you know going for his own shot when he had an opportunity to make another pass to get to a get to another guy you know it's just like that me ball stuff I'm not a fan of that 
I am not a fan of meatball, especially when it's coming from somebody who doesn't have it going. If you have it going and you're looking good and you're having a, a hot night, cool. Do the meatball thing because you're helping your team. But if you're three foot twelve and you still and, and and you get down to the last minute of the game and you know damn well it ain't been your work that's got you into this situation and you decide f the rest of my teammates i'm gonna go and do what i need to do to showcase myself that's the type of thing that's gonna turn me off i'm gonna want you off my team that's the real that's the real truth about how i felt about max lewis tonight i was like oh no this trait is not it when it develops into what it's supposed to be it can be special, but in the development stages, he the type of dude I'm sitting next to me if I'm coach. You sit your ass down. We ain't doing none of that. So that's that's my God's honest truth. I think Max Lewis has a long way to go before he develops into what I want him to. I'm not saying I'm giving up on him because I've seen players do this and develop into nice players. I really have. That's not, that's not a thing. But what I'm telling you is tonight, it's one of the nights where I need the coach to grab Max Lewis, sit him down, have a nice long talk about being unselfish, and 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 being uh aware of what is going to help you win which is the bigger picture and what's going to cause people to look at you and say we lost because of you that's the real thing that's the type of conversation he needs to be having with his coaches tonight because he did some things that if we lost this game it's his damn fault even though it's not actually the case because there's a lot of things that come together to make it so that an outcome is what it is. But down a stressful basketball game, when you're up by six with like a minute and a half to go and one guy who's been cold all game decides he wants to do everything, yeah, that's that type of stuff right there makes people not like you very much on a basketball team. And the fans turn on you as well. So uh, this is a learning experience for, for young Max. Luckily for all of us, we didn't lose. Uh, he did find himself being aggressive. I think he did contribute to some good things at times. But this was the one game where I looked and got an identification of something that really needs to be addressed when it comes to that player. His selfishness is unacceptable. So that's what I say, man. That's my whole point of view, man. I'm not I'm not harsh without intention of seeing people be great, though. I want to see him be great in a Laker uniform. I like that he's here. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those situations where if you're going to be one of them hero guys, you got to know when to turn it on and when to defer. You know what I'm saying? That's what it really is about. So while everybody else is going to be pointing out Bronny James for good or bad, I'm actually paying attention to, to things that involve the entire team. And every man matters on this squad when it comes to the players that I think are going to be a part of our big squad. Some of them dudes ain't going to be there, and we know that. But the ones that we're investing in, yeah, I'm going to talk about them like they like everybody else talking about Bronny James because what they do is going to affect our basketball team, Period. And Max Lewis is most definitely one of the players, man. So that's pretty much my thought, man. Shut Castleton down. I don't need to see no more from him. Next time we see him, it should be preseason because he's good. We know he's good. And uh, that that is that is the end of that. Um, and keep Kuzi around, man. Keep Kuzi in our G League because you may want to use him in real life, in the big leagues. You may want to use him if things go absolutely catastrophic. There are aspects of his game that I think can potentially be of service to our garbage time minutes. A connective piece that can help us finish off basketball games and keep big leads. Or maybe even have a, a valiant fight in a blowout that's going the wrong way. I think he's somebody who could be a last man on your, on your roster that you call up. If you get some real bad injury issues and stuff like that. If, you, if, if all else fails and you don't have a point guard. You will have been happy that he was in your G League ready to be called up. I don't think we should let him go overseas, none of that. Keep him somewhere around because uh, I see enough from him to know that he can help the team. Even though he's extremely limited, still, he can help. So that's that's something that I really feel. I really like Kuzi. So that's pretty much it, man. Game ball goes to Castleton for sure. Ain't no way around that. That's Castleton's night. Um... And uh, that's pretty much my take on this game, man. I'm glad we won. I'm glad Risa Shea wasn't out there. Kobe Bufkin wasn't out there. It was a lot of primary Hawks that have either been shut down or are dealing with injury. Uh, Kaysan Wallace's brother got hurt out there, man. I didn't even know Kaysan Wallace had a brother in basketball, but he rolled his ankle pretty bad. So prayers up to him. The guys are fighting for their opportunity. The last thing you want to see him do is get hurt in summer league, especially when they're playing pretty well, which he was. Um... 
they had some noteworthy dudes. I don't remember their names, but check out those Hawks that, that had a nice highlights tonight. They deserve opportunities because they, they look great out there. But uh, we were able to get the victory, man. We were the better team tonight overall. And uh, I love it. I I'm glad we were able to get this victory, especially showing the fact that Dalton Connect wasn't out there. Also, it's also noteworthy that Jalen Hushafino was on the bench. He wasn't in clothes, but he was over there with the unit. Hopefully that means he's not completely debilitated to where he can't at least run around. I need to see him in the summer league. I'm very disappointed that he's not available. And and if if he's hurt or if he's still recovering from the back, cool. But if he can go and they're hiding him for, because of trade, or that's, that's a mistake. You need to develop this player, man. And you're more likely to be able to get a trade off if he has a good summer league game than you would if the last time people saw him, he looked like trash, which is what it is. So hiding him, protecting him from playing well is stupid. When you're trying to move a guy, you need to showcase him. So that's, I don't want to move him personally, but if that's what Rob is doing, he should have been out there. He don't need to be hiding him. Because <laughs> the way I see it is the risk is, is not that bad. The worst case scenario is he gets hurt and you can't move him. But he ain't worth anything any damn way. You do you, whatever trade you give, you throwing him into. He's just a throw-in. So it's not like you're losing some valuable piece if he rolls an ankle or something. It, it, like you're really not. The best thing, the, the, the what can be beneficial from seeing him out there, is so much more important than what could go wrong if he gets hurt again. God's honest truth. But never the case, never, nevertheless, the case is this. I hope we are able to hold on to this player, and I want to see what he can do. Not because I want to trade him, but because I think he needs the reps. So he, it would have been great to see him out there, man. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much my take on things, man. Glad our Lakers finally won our first game in the Summer League after six tries. It's been grueling. This is a bad Summer League team, but they got a good run at it tonight against the shorthanded Atlanta Hawks Summer League squad. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. Wow.